Los Angeles. I'm here to terminate unwanted skin bumps. My question to you is, what is your breaking point? I thought I knew what my breaking point was until I met Bob. After watching this video, you might find yourself rethinking what your breaking point is. The story of Bob. Hi, I'm Robert Peters. I am here to seek help for a treatment of my acne colloidus nuclei. I've had this problem since I was around 10 years old. It started on my neck as a very small bump. It was uh, first treated as warts. When I hit puberty, it expanded throughout my neck. I noticed that I started getting a folding in my scalp probably in my early teenage years, around between 14 to 16 years of age. Once the, uh, the folds started appearing, I noticed the Aiken started moving more above my scalp line. It was very sore. I would get discharge from it as well. So I've had uh, many different types of treatments at first before I met you, doctor. The first treatment uh, when I was little was it was misdiagnosed as warts, so I would get like wart medicine. Then as the disease progressed in my teenage years and I saw other dermatologists, I've been treated with Accutane and the stereotypes. The pretty much I would be given antibiotics and that would stop the inflammation, but it never cured the disease. Over the past recent years, I was working on the road and I wasn't able to find a dermatologist that would pretty much find a cure for it. It was all pretty much the same with, with antibiotics or steroid treatments and that was it. All these dermatologists that I've been researching and contacting that they would not be able to help me. So I YouTube acne colloidus nuclei removal and Dr. Yu was the only guy that I saw that came up that had the actual procedure done. So he was the first doctor that I noticed that was actually physically treating the disease. Between the look of them being right here on the side and not being able to hide it anymore and the pain that I have with the soreness, the discharge, the stares that I get, just simple things like I can't wear my glasses, I can't sit on you know somebody's couch or wear a white t-shirt. It's just getting out of control so I just need, need the help. Sometimes I have problems sleeping because it, it's on the back of my head and neck. So I can't sleep like a regular person on my back with my head on the pillow. So I developed a, a way of sleeping on my, on my stomach and using almost my arms as pillows only because if I was staying at a relative's or friend's house, I, I had a phobia, I had a concern about bleeding on a pillow or on their bed sheet. So I developed the habit of just only sleeping on my stomach. But there would be times where I would have like a cold or a stuffy runny nose and just sitting up or laying, you know, I couldn't even do. So it's affecting my sleep tremendously. Sometimes it would be inflamed and so I would have constant itching and swelling this that would keep me up at night. It's affected me tremendously in my, in my confidence level, my ability to do my job. I have to hold client meetings. Sometimes we do press conferences and I purposely try to avoid those. It's affected not only my work career, but my personal relationships outside of that. It's affected my confidence and, and my ability to interact with people. I don't go to church anymore because it's a place that you shouldn't be judged in. And I feel like I get judged, especially having somebody sit behind me two feet away. And I can, it almost feels like their eyes are piercing through me. My family goes to Disneyland. I don't go to Disneyland because of all the kids. Kids are brutally honest. You know, they, they call it out, they point and they, they ask questions and it gets exhausting sometimes. Part of my strategy of hiding this is having long hair, wearing collared shirt, a hoodie or a beanie. And it's kind of funny wearing a beanie in the middle of summer when it's 105 degrees outside. I like to camp and hunt and fish and that I can't even do because I had to be in the city, I had to be where I can wash my hair thoroughly, not just a simple rinse, but I would have to have hot water and lots of soap to, to keep up with the hygiene. I'm not taking antibiotics or any treatment right now, so just to keep the bacteria down because of the, the discharge and the infection, just try to really keep myself uh, hygienically clean and that's basically all I can do right now. My hopes are, are to finally cure the disease and to basically just get my life back. I feel like my life has been taken away from me. I can't take it no more. My hope is just to be able to feel good and just have a regular normal life. Emotionally, this has taken a toll on me. This disease has gotten worse to where I can no longer hide it or feel like I can hide it. I look in the mirror and I see my these bumps on me every single day and I it just it, it's demoralizing. 
Bob's case, well, I wouldn't call it progress, but at least we've crossed one bridge. I have to try and call to send finasteride, even turmeric, in a cycling. Uh, he's done that now for six weeks, or at least two months. And it doesn't appear to be changing much. We did a biopsy, obviously, the biopsy confirmed that he has a nuclear that is nuke, no surprise, with a lot of inflammation and pus. Now that that approach has not worked, conventional treatment in the past has not worked, our surgical treatments will not work on him, or not viable, and laser will not. It's now time to uh, up the ante and actually go to the next level. And at this stage, we'll be looking at using radiation treatment. Typically, we use radiation to treat cancer, but we use radiation for all sorts of things as well. Now, we're going to do a few things to minimize the risk of radiation. And also, we're going to nuance the treatment, radiation treatment, using more updated understanding of how AKN works. We're going to try and get that out today. First of all, there are major blood vessels that go through there. We know you have some activity here, so AKN is there. 